Do you have a paranormal story you want to share on Night Dreams Talk Radio? You could be a guest. Email us at nightdreamstalkradio at gmail.com. You are listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio Network. From our compound to you worldwide. With your host, Gary Anderson. Hey, that is me. We're talking about photographing old, well, abandoned buildings everywhere from mental institutions to theaters with Matt. Uh, Matt, you still there? I'm still here. And James, are you with us? I am. I'm still here, buddy. Okay. So, I mean, in any of these theaters, have you ran across any haunted theaters? Uh, I... Yeah, actually, I was in the uh, Pacific Warner Theater in uh, Hollywood, California, and it's actually haunted, apparently, by one of the Warner Brothers. Uh, So the story goes that uh, Sam Warner was working on making the first talking picture, which is a jazz singer, and they were building the theater at the same time, and they wanted it to premiere there but the theater wasn't going to be ready in time. So they moved it out to a theater in New York city and Sam Warner died 24 hours before the first showing uh, of a brain hemorrhage. And soon after the theater opened, the story goes that people started seeing him walking through the halls in the theater, going to his office, pacing around the lobby. And it's just been, those stories have been going, uh, ever since and now the building has been closed since the early 90s and there's on-site security and they say the same thing they say that you know sometimes the elevator goes up to the offices you hear people walking around upstairs and we just think it's sam interesting and they they talk to him they say hi to him uh, I when I photographed it, I I asked them a couple questions about that, and they said, "Yeah, it happens. And, you know, the elevator will go up, and you hear footsteps, and no one else is here. So you, you never know if that's if it's just someone snuck in and they said no, and it happens every now and then, or if it's you know you're the ghost of Sam Warner." Well, I I believe it's probably the ghost because you know that building I almost fell through the ceiling was haunted. You know, I was there for 10 years managing three of the, the, it was a camera store, professional camera store. We had three of them. I was the general manager. And, uh, you know, I had employees would come up to me and say, I'm not going down in the basement anymore to get our supply. We carried all our, you know, uh, back stock for all three stores were in the basement because it was huge. It was, you know, this was a big building. You know, the basement was huge, huge. And we had all our stock down there, and I'd send the, my employees to go and go down there and bring tripods up or or what have you from the basement. You know, they would come back and tell me the place was haunted, that they would smell lilac, or they would see things move on their own down there. And some of these employees, I would hire, you know, we would hire like uh, all service personnel that, you know, wanted to moonlight or ex-military people. One person we had was an ex-ranger. We had an ex-Navy SEAL. Uh, we had a guy who was a chief bosun mate on you know nuclear submarines. They all would come up. Now, they didn't work together. It was over like a 10-year period. They would come and go because they wouldn't hang around very long. When they all of a sudden started seeing things move or they saw strange things in the basement, they would quit. You know, I started thinking these people were crazy because I never had that problem. Until one day, one of my employees came up to me and said, hey, Gary, the place is haunted. I just watched something move. And I I looked at him. I said, oh, you're crazy. And, you know, and he goes, I'm not going to go get down there and get the the merchandise for our other store. You have to do it. So I got upset. I went down there. The first thing I noticed, I smelled lilac. I, and I take another step, and hey, the li- lilac smell was gone. But it went from being cold to warm to cold. Didn't think too much of it. I just thought it was strange. If anything I would smell would be down there, it would be the sewer. You know, the sewer pipes, which ran down there through the basement. Because uh, we actually went under the main road of Tacoma, uh, downtown Tacoma. That Anyway, 
I felt somebody tap me on the shoulder and I figured, okay, it's the, the guy who refused to, you know, to go down there and get the stuff. And he tapped me hard enough where it hurt. So I doubled my fist. I went to swing and hit him and there was absolutely nobody there. <laughs> nobody. That kind of freaked me out. Okay. And then I would be down there late at night because also I figured, you know, I'm going to take a course on, you know, learning digital camera repair. So I went to school for that because the company paid for it. So I started doing all the camera digital, you know, clean of the sensors and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'd be down there late at night because I wanted to make sure that there was no air movement. You know, the air conditioning system was off for a few hours. I'd be down there sometimes like 12 o'clock, one o'clock at in the morning, you know, cleaning sensors and doing all that stuff. And all of a sudden, uh, where my office was, on the other side was the staircase that went up for the, to the main office for the, the business. But it originally was the staircase for the hotel, for all the you know, different uh, floors. I started hearing footprints, not footprints, but footsteps going up the stairs. First time, it was like only one person. You hear the creak and you actually heard the, the foot, you know, steps making noises. And then it started being multiple a few days later. And then like an, a week after that, I, I remember I was down there and all of a sudden I started hearing people going up the staircase. And then I heard muffled talking along with men and women. And I quickly ran out, you know, <laughs> figuring, well, hey, you know, I don't know how anybody got in here because I have a dead bolted from inside. There was nobody there. The next morning, I go up to the boss, and I said, I quit. Wow. <laughs> I quit. Oh, that's funny. That that reminds yeah. me of a couple of years ago, I was uh, investigating some haunted land and, and with a guy I know, and uh, he knew somebody. It was a little small town in West Virginia, and he knew the um, owner of, well, not the owner, the uh, head fire chief volunteer fire department. He said, yeah, you guys can just stay overnight there. You know, here's the keys, whatnot. So we're staying there, and he had to go uptown, so it was just me and this fire old fire station. And the uh, bathroom door was locked, and the only way you can unlock it, you have to have a key or unless you're inside to turn the thing. And I didn't think nothing of it, and it was locked. I checked it. So I went back through there earlier because I was hearing noises, like somebody knocking, you know, and there's no other doors or nothing. So I thought, nah, it can't be somebody in that bathroom because it's locked. You know, no, nobody's been in there. So I go to reach for the, the, the knob just for, you know, heck of it. And the door opens on itself as before I get my hand on it. Now, that was freaky. I got to tell you, because there's no way that could have opened unless somebody was on the inside. And then a few minutes later, I, I hear this voice, uh, a disembodied voice, plain as day. Everybody could hear it if he was there. And it, it said, uh, did you drive here? And I'm like, who said that? There's nobody in this building but me. It was freaky. Yeah, did you drive? <laughs> No, I didn't even drive that night. I rode with my friend who had the car uptown. That was weird. Now, Matt, how many different buildings have you photographed so far? Do you have a idea? Oh, uh, uh, well, theaters. I think it's about one hundred and seventy-seven. Uh, but as for other buildings, like uh, asylums or in hospitals, industrial buildings, I, I I don't have a count of that. But it's it's quite a few. Now, have you done any old prisons or jails or anything like that? I have. Um, I've done, I shot the Moundsville uh, Penitentiary in Moundsville, West Virginia, Eastern State Penitentiary in Philadelphia, the uh, Springfield Jail in Springfield, Massachusetts, uh, the was it the Newark Correctional Center in Newark, New Jersey. I'm trying to think of any others. But I think that those might be the only ones. Now, did you get any eerie feelings when you were in any of these prisons? Because, you know, people in, in incarcerated, you know, are not going to be in the very uh, best of mood. Plus, let's face it, how many people didn't survive their jail term because they maybe other prisoners didn't like them, if you know what I mean. I, I mean, did you get any bad vibes uh, at all or any ghost haunts or anything scary while you were doing any of these things? Well, the prison in Newark was, uh, the, all the other ones are in, they're not, I, would, I don't want to say decent shape because they're run down and uh, some of them are tourist attractions now, Moundsville and Eastern State, so they kind of keep them up a little bit. But the one in Newark, which is, has been demolished, um, the, 
it, it was uh, that one. Would I would say was a little eerie. The uh, but the the scariest thing that happened in that one is uh, the the doors worked. You could the door system. It was a it was a manual. You pull a lever and all the the doors to the cells would shut. And uh, so we were we were trying to video that. And one of my friends went into the cell and we shut the doors and then they wouldn't open. <laughs> so we, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to laugh on that. I, I got a funny feeling your friend wasn't very happy. No, no, he was not. And it, it took quite a while <laughs> for us to figure out how to make, uh, how to get them to open again. And luckily we did, but uh, he was not very happy with that. But that was the, the scariest thing that happened in that, any of these prisons, uh, with, with places like the asylums, we, sometimes we'd go at night, um, you know, with the specific purpose of thinking, okay, nighttime, there'll be more activity. It'll be fun to get scared and, uh, see what's going on. But at the prisons, we were always there during the day. Yeah, when you're also doing this now, were you using a digital uh, still camera? Were you using video? Or what, what what type of equipment were you using, Matt? Uh, when I first started, it was with a uh, a camcorder. I was filming, and then I switched to a black and white film cam or a, black, or a film camera and shooting black and white at first because I started. I was in college and I was taking a uh, photography class and learning how to develop film. And so I was shooting film for a little bit, and then it went to a digital SLR, and that's what I use uh, still. Yeah, well, that, that's the thing. The technology has gone so far. You know, like, a lot of people don't realize that these SLR or DSLR cameras, you know, like some of them are used to, in, in full-featured movies because the, you know, the capability of the digital, you know, both for film uh, imitation or for video uh, the technology is advanced so far i mean you could go out and buy uh example a uh, uh fuji or one of the other ones for a couple thousand dollars or less and is capable of doing movie quality you know filming and a lot of the people who make indie movies that's what they use in fact i had a a producer on my show about a year ago they he made a and this is a major movie they made they had like seven of those cameras i think the panasonic one of them and that's what their their main cameras they were using so i mean technology has come so far in the last few years uh for doing 